What? What's going on everybody? Welcome back to more Indigo Prophecy. When we last left off, we were about to enter an insane asylum to find out information. I don't think that's a great idea personally. But what do I know? Is he allowed? He's doctor? Are you? Oh yes, yeah, this place has power issues. Anyway, second corridor on the right. I think he said... Oh, you scared the living shit out of me there, dude, but all right. Hello, detectives. I'll wait for you here. Thank you, thank you. Thanks. Hello, Clarice. It's a lot of, uh... It's a lot of security for one man. Oh, you got a smile that kills. Oh. <laughs> Alright, no need to frown, bitch. Jesus. If you want information, you gotta start playing ball. And being pissy isn't playing ball. Hello, I'm Detective Carla Valenti of the New York Police Department. I'd like to ask you a few questions, if it's alright with you. a quid pro quo. Could we talk a little about Kirsten? What really happened in the store? Why have you gone to the trouble of coming to see me? Detective Valetti. Wow. I'm mad, you know. What I have to say is meaningless. I don't believe that. Isn't that right? No. Maybe you're not sick. Maybe it's that no one has taken the time to really listen to you. A man and a woman. In a laundromat. She's a little overweight. Well, that's a... Hispanic looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If he has a knife planted in his eye. Yeah. How do you know that? I was there. I can see through his eyes. All right, now you're scaring me a little Every bit. one of the murders. I there. What happened in the laundromat? A sacrifice. A human sacrifice. The killer and his victim. <laughs> what? Who is the murderer? Nobody knows. Nobody sees him. He leaves no trace in people's memories. But I know. I know he exists. He's among us. Invisible. Don't they give these people toothbrushes? Look at that. That bit bear. There have been other identical murders, haven't there? The killings won't stop until they found the little girl. Why? Why are they killing? Exactly! Oh, the world's not what you think it is. What? The Orange Clan are secretly running everything. They're watching us, listening to us all of the time. They record what you say. They know what you're doing each second of the day. Oh, that's They're embarrassing. Everywhere. Oh, dear. Hopefully they never release this. How is this connected to the murders? They want ultimate power. They want the answer to the question of life. They want to be eternal. Has he got ink all over his face? He's giving him I a blue pen. On, Thank you for your help. Damn! It's already too late. We're all going to die from the cold. It'll be the dawn of a new race. The end of humanity. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You, well, there's no need to laugh about it. I don't know why I'm laughing either, but it's, just, it's a serious subject. Sort of spiral drawn hundreds of times on the wall of the cell. Why is he obsessed by this symbol? Move on. <laughs> oh, let's get out of here. That was everything. Go all right. Yeah. I'll walk you to to the what? Damn it. This time it looks serious. It looks to me like our backup electrical generator hasn't kicked in. Give it time. Come on. Sometimes it takes a minute. Well, there you we'll go. Wait here in the meantime. Okay. Uh... What's that noise? Oh shit. The cell doors. All of the cell doors have been opened. The electrical outage must have screwed up the auto lock system. What kind of system what? is you got Do you running here? Are free to leave their cells and nothing Wait. Don't move. Don't make any noise. We don't want them to locate us here. They're not a T-Rex. They're humans. They will find you. Relax. Stay close to me. Oh! The aid. I can't see shit. I have to move from here. Oh, I'm in first person. I don't 
breathe more calmly. I'm gonna faint. And then they get me for sure. Oh god. Alright. Find a way out of here. I can't see shit. I think that's the point, no? But if I can't see shit, then you definitely can't see shit. Oh, whoa. <laughs> that was that was Don't move. that was way too loud, but I got totally scared. He's going away. I can keep moving. It was like Gollum. I can only go forward. <laughs> Oh, this is fun. Oh, God, the keypad scared me. I thought that were eyes. All right. He's right there. Hey, oh! Dude, pull up your pants, ass crack. He's going away. I can keep moving. Aren't we going to pass him, though? Before the mental patients are out, why is everybody still screaming like they're in echoey cells? Oh! What are we gonna- what, what do we do? <laughs> Carla, what do we do, woman? Fear. See, I, I was waiting, but nothing really happened. Oh, and why am I walking into the door? That's probably not it. What, why is... Oh, I can actually look around. Well, look at that. Who would have thunk it? Oh shit, I can actually... Oh no! I hear one coming! He's getting so close! Please, Carla, don't move! Hold your breath! Alright, well... He's going away. I believe it's up this way. I believe this is up. There was a second corridor on your right, so... Dude, you pissed your pants! Get yourself bloody fixed up! He's going away. <laughs> I can keep moving. Alright. Let's act casually. <laughs> we are natural, you and I. We are. Oh, fuck! <laughs> Run! Barney! Barney! You stupid son of a bitch! This is why you lost your job in Black Mesa! Oh, thank God you made it out. I don't know what the hell could have happened. The auto lock system opened all of the cell doors. You don't seem that well, panicked. Are you sure you're all right? Great, Barney. <laughs> I feel great. I love playing hide and seek in the dark with a pack of psychopathic killers. What about the the dude that we were with? Aren't you going to tell him about that? Nope. All right. Well, fuck that guy then. He was expendable. This man I'd barely seen on TV was my last hope. I didn't know what connection there could be between the Mayans and what had happened to me. It's the but end that, of the I world as we know it. That could make sense out of the nightmare. Agent 47. Hello, uh, I'm a journalist and I have an appointment with Professor Kiryakin. The professor's waiting for you. Well, th thank you, 47. Alright. Let's just go up and snap his neck! Yeah! More murder! Professor Kiryakin? Yes? My name's John Cunningham. A nice we side spoke on the phone. I'm a journalist, and I'm gathering information for an article I'm writing about the Mayan religion. 
Ah, yes, I've been waiting for you, young man. Oh, well, hello. Uh, what, um, what paper did you say you write for once again? Uh, uh... I write for National Geographic. Shit. It's, uh, it's curious, but your face seems familiar to me. Uh, have we met somewhere before? Yeah, I get that a lot. Uh, I guess I must have one of those boring faces everybody sees everywhere. Uh-oh. Well then, let's uh, have a go at it. <laughs> Where would you like to start? I brought the lube. Can you tell me anything about Kweknitlan? Of course. Come, I'll introduce you. Oh, it's very nice of you. Is she, is she friendly? I mean... Oh, it's a two-headed snake that looks like a dragon, I'm assuming? You see before you the ancient Mayan god Kweknitlan, the serpent with the two heads. One head sees in this reality, mm -hmm. the second in the other world. By <sighs> opening both mouths, the Mayan oracles could see through the serpent into the other world. My goodness. Could you explain this other world? Oh, the world beyond our own. The kingdom of the gods and the dead. The so Agatha got through. Human sacrifices allowed them to hear the voices of the deceased and see <sighs> into the future. What exactly do we know about these oracles? Oh, not very much. <laughs> they were very mysterious. They served as mystic liaisons, allowing mm. man to connect with supernatural forces. If we can believe the ancient text, I mean, that's just the silly hogwash. Strange powers. What kind of powers did the oracles possess? Some passages mention a supernatural life force permitting yeah. the oracle to live for several hundred years. Tell me, how did the sacrificial ceremony work? Come, I'll show you. I'm not being a sacrifice. I've fallen for this trick, you wily little scamp. Dating from the first century BC shows a sacrificial ceremony. The victim's agony must have lasted quite some time. The priority being to keep the mouths open as long as possible. Okay. The victim was stabbed three times, each wound cutting a pulmonary artery leading to the heart. <sighs> what? What? The Oracle is not the one stabbing the victim? Oh, the Oracle must never soil himself with the blood of another. I mean, that would be stupid, that is right? Why he chooses a sort of proxy, another person in the crowd, totally at random. This person becomes the executor. Hmm. The Oracle takes complete control of the executor, manipulating him from a distance. What happened to the executor after the sacrifice? He went mad and committed suicide after accomplishing his part of the ritual. A Mayan sacrifice. Is that is that, that two murders then? Wow. You aren't a journalist, are you? Who yes. Are you? Ah. My name is Lucas Kane. The police are looking for me about a murder that I did not commit, but I was the executor. You're a murderer? Well, uh... I'm innocent. I stabbed someone I'd never seen before three times, cutting his arteries, just like you described. Do you mean to say that there is a Mayan oracle still living today? Yes! B but that's completely impossible! Several hundred years! You said several hundred years! Have you ever seen this symbol before? Oh. It's the symbol of Quagnitlan. The executors cut this into their own forearms before accomplishing the sacrifice. So, it is true. <laughs> My God. The Codex was right. What? The Codex? What are you talking about, Professor? 
You can't stay here. Your picture is in the paper that the security guard is reading. He's sure to recognize you. Come, let's leave here, and I'll tell you all about it. Agent 47's not gonna notice me. Fuck you! Oh, he's only gone. What are you doing, Lucas? Run! Like a boss. Is the mysterious car gonna Thank run him you over? For your help, Professor. I'm hedging my bets now. Oh! Uh. Nicely done. Oh my god, what's happening? This is what happens to Pixar's Disney cars or whatever they're called. They never made them. Was it Disney? I think it was Disney. Or Pixar. Oh, I don't know. This is what happens when they get drunk on their, all their premium motor oil. They go crazy. Oh! Oh, that's got to be a 10. That's got to be a 10. The judges are giving him a 9. That's a bloody robbery! Only possible with Nike Air. Nike Air shoes sponsoring this video. Oh, you badass! You bloody badass! Professor, the Codex speaks of the coming of a child, a prophet. Okay. Is, is this a, uh, oh, Don't get depressed. Oh, have I just committed another murder? Did I what, did I push him? Did his hip replacement break? Oh! Awkward. Unknown place. Unknown tomorrow. <laughs> Find out tomorrow. What happens? Thanks for watching. I'll see you then. Goodbye.